well there you have it i'm finally going to sit down and make you a video on this little boss rc3 uh, loop station i have two of these pedals i have one at my f on my uh, pedal board which which i'm going to be using and demonstrating how i'm going to cut a loop for you i'm going to uh, use the um, carlos Santana song uh, evil ways Did, and i'm going to cut it live for you now once i've explained to you how this pedal works this little pedal comes with a manual about that thick and about that big and that high but only 30 and about that thick if I, only about 30 pages are relevant to you to read can i tell you that it kept me awake for about three weeks trying to figure out how to use this pedal effectively i still can't say i use 100 percent of the functions because built into this little pedal a very well used pedal i will add is mind-blowing circuitry for the value uh, i think it cost me about 340 australian dollars um, probably a lot cheaper in the us but because of our currency etc and import tariffs but i'm going to demonstrate you how to use this pedal effectively and you don't want to spend three hours designing a loop and then at a click of a switch foot switch you lose the whole loop <laughs> believe me that happens to the best of us it's like backing up your computer regularly i'm going to show you how to overdub and how to use this pedal effectively in combination with a drum pedal because this pedal comes with a built-in uh, drum beat and i explained to you there are nine drum beats on this pedal and uh, but i think you can do a lot better for yourself as I will demonstrate to you in a moment. You're going to have to excuse me every now and then. I have to go down onto the floorboard, down to the pedal board where I'm going to use the live pedal to demonstrate um, what these little functions are. So, uh, how I came across this pedal, I used to jam. Um, I stopped playing guitar at the age of 28. I had played for about a total of seven years as an absolute amateur. I played in several bands, etc. I gave up totally for 15 years till the age of uh, 43. Then I bought my Gibson Les Paul and I, um, I started jamming over my LPs, the vinyl LPs and uh, cassettes. Uh, you remember what a cassette is? And then um, CDs, etc. Um, when I was a kid, we used to play uh, along to a transistor radio. Remember those little crystal radio sets about this size? And uh, we used to play along to the... Uh, Lorenzo Marx Mozambique radio station because they could broadcast the offshore stuff much like that movie um, the boat that rocked in the UK you know that uh, we, the, the local radio station in South Africa wasn't allowed to play some of the aggressive music like the Beatles or the Rolling Stones <laughs> because of their, uh, their views anyway so we would listen to as 13 14 year olds to uh, Lorenzo Marx radio otherwise known as L LM radio to a little transistor and with our acoustic box guitars try and figure out what the guitarists were doing okay so now in the model we need to figure out how this pedal works so how it came about it so about 10 years ago I, I seriously got back into playing in fact my wife said I became obsessed with playing I was playing up to seven hours a day seven days a week I wasn't going to bed before 11 o'clock at night um, I was still building up my business um, I was getting up at five o'clock in the morning coming down into this cold music room in effectively a basement where the temperatures were literally as low as minus two without any air conditioning not to wake up the family i would sit here for two or three hours before going to work and then absolutely obsessed i still play at least three to four hours a day seven days a week <laughs> um, i've spent thousands of hours on youtube uh, researching techniques and um, on guitar and songs in fact three and a, about three and a half thousand hours currently in the last 10 years don't let people tell you you can't learn how to play guitar on youtube i'm not professing to be a great guitarist or anything but i've learned so much from youtube uh, and i'm not paid to do this ever right let's get down to the pedal now i'm sure you fast forward to get yourself so i've got an equivalent on my pedal board down there then i've got a um, a beat buddy which is a drum pedal about equivalent in size which um, goes into the loop pedal. So in your pedal board, you go from your guitar 
uh, in case you don't know how to uh, connect a pedal board and a loop station, you go from your guitar into your tuner, you then go through a noise suppressor, hopefully you got one of those, listen what happens. Can you hear that? That pedal cost me $89 eight years ago. $89, it's by, um, it's called a noise suppressor. I can't see who it's made by. It's made by Boss. And, and I'm not being sponsored to do this then. I have got a compressor sustainer pedal. Like when you play Pink Floyd, you want to stretch those notes out. Or if you want to play funk, you'll, you'll um, um, increase the attack of the note, if you know what I mean. You then go into your heaviest of distortion pedals, your fuzz distortion, your gain pedals. I have two of those. I have a mega distortion and a blues driver. Then you go into your uh, modulation pedals. And by that I mean chorus, flanger, phases, echo delay normally comes after those. Reverb pedal normally comes last after all your other modulation pedals. This is the order of your chain. You then go into, in my case, a Beat Buddy drum machine. I've got Beat Buddy 1. I've heard Beat Buddy 2. It's got about 16 more uh, drum beats on it. They uh, um, unantenuated drum beats. It's a really nice little tool to have to practice. And my necessity came down to, um, and then the last pedal in your um, your chain before you go into the back end of your fax loop of your amplifier, because you want to cut out. Um, you'll get a lot of swirling and earth. You know, you get too much preamp distortion, so you go into the fax loop. I'll do another. Um, another video on effects loops if you want me to. I've become quite an expert in them. I've actually seen some of the world's best musicians misquote on YouTube how to use an effects loop on something like a Marshall JCM 800 amplifier. I'm, and I'm using a Boss uh, Katana. I'm not going to be playing very loud today. Boss Katana uh, Mark II, 100 watt. It's got a 50 watt feature on it, uh, but I like playing 100 watt to get a better tone, uh, especially at louder volumes. And um, if you're interested, let me know in the comments below. I will show you how to use a um, an amplifier's effects loop. I found out the hard way, teaching myself, like I taught myself this thing. So, 30 hours later, <laughs> and about eight years of massive use, as you can see, the sort of use, um, <laughs> the friction, the physical friction this thing's been through, just you and me jamming alone 99% of the time. Okay, what have we got here? We've got, we got two knobs here. The, the small one controls the drum beat. There are 10 drum beats, the antenniated drum. Doof, doof, doof. I can, and, and um, so that controls the volume. And, and, and a, a, a caution here, always turn the volumes down to zero when you plug into your amplifier because you can find that if you're going through the effects loop, if you push the wrong button on the back of that amp, you're going to get a 100 watts tube amp quality. I was literally thrown four meters across this room when I was down at my pedal board and I had this at 10 without realizing the drum beat. I pushed the drum beat on by clicking. That's how you get the drum beat to start rolling when you got this rhythm button depressed there. Um, that one there by the, the red writing. And if you push the um, certain button on the back of that amp, you're going to get the equivalent of about 800 watts. It literally hit me like I was hit by a cannonball. It hit me four meters across this room and I hit the wall on the other end. It's, it's really serious. Keep your volumes down until you know what you're doing. Because the amplifier on the front of the amplifier's volume button does not control if you're going via the effects loop. So you watch those buttons and really I can't stress that enough. Sorry this is taking so long. Now, the, the, the bigger button of the two controls your guitar's volume. You go into the input, input A. You put your guitar into that jack there where it says input A. One day I had uh, three guitarists here jamming with me and I got no sound because I was going into that one. Just remember to go into A or B. Okay, they are marked A or B input. Your output goes into the effects loop at the back. That's where output from your pedal board into your amplification. Right, you've got memory up and down. It controls the 99 available banks. There are 99 banks from numbers 91 
from 90 to 99 are pre-recorded by Boss. You can keep them. I deleted them. I didn't find them of any value. They're just like samples of what you can achieve by looping. That's your memory banks. So you select the memory bank and you will see it will go, it'll light up and it'll tell you 01, 02, 03, up to 99. You pick a memory bank that's not yet used. So you leave the 90 to 99 intact when you get your pedal until you know what you're doing. And if you don't want those, you can delete them. From, um, the, okay, so we'll set our pedal uh, set selection. I've got number 34. I've chosen it as a uh, unused on my, my pedal bank A. I've got two of them. Um, I'm using channel 34. You just select a channel. Now the light is showing red. I've got my volume controls. I've got my drum down at zero because I don't want uh, this to use this drum machine if I push the wrong button by accident. I've got my guitar's volume set at par because when I play back and I want to play with some other guitarist, I like to be able to play back the recording that I put into this, my loop, which is going to form a backing of a jam that we all do. Um, I like it at par. So whatever my amp's volume is, I, this is at par, if that makes sense to you. Right, you've got your memory, which controls banks 1 to 99. In other words, songs, different songs that you'll record, backings to songs. You then got rhythm on, rhythm off. That controls this machine's nine pre-recorded, uh, attenuated drum beats. In other words, doof, 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 doof. That's what it'll do for you. Not very exciting, to be honest. But, but it's good for your training if you're training as a learning guitarist to learn certain rhythms. Um, tap tempo, if you click it rapidly, it will increase the tempo. Now, I'm going to give you a demonstration in a moment. So all I'm doing, I've selected a memory bank. I'm going to then turn on the rhythm section. Remember, I've got my volume set at par because I know that I'm in the right of the back of my Katana amp. And, um, and now then I'm going to, I'm going to um, just show you what it does now. Just excuse me a second. So here we go, we're going to Okay, when I depress, when I depress this button here, that's how I got that thing to start running. You will notice that when, I de when you depress it, a red light, this little red, this light starts flashing red. Dip, dip. And how I got it to change speed, tap tempo. Tick, tick, tick. And if the faster I go, the faster it will oscillate. And then if you want it to slow down, you tap it slowly. like, And, you, and you'll notice it has about four or five different uh, tempos. Right. Now, um, now, I'm not going to use this little machine's very basic attenuated drum beat. I'm going to use this drum machine's drum beat, which sounds like this. It's a blues beat 4 over 4 at a tempo of 109 beats a minute, because it tells me that. Okay, now I've got the drums going. I've got my guitar plugged into channel input A. My, my guitar my guitar goes through my pedal board and my from my reverb from my drum machine pedal into my drum my um, reverb into my drum machine remember i told you that reverbs last in the modulations in the chain into the drum machine from out from my drum machine into input a i've now switched the drum machine on i am now going to press this with my foot to record this drum beat One bar, listen. Two bars. I'm waiting for the fourth bar. Did you hear that? That's telling me that was the fourth bar. Two. Three. Four. What went wrong there? I forgot to clear my memory bank because I had a pre-recorded number on channel 
34, or song bank number 34. So how did I get rid of it? I depress this with my foot and I hold it down until I see the words CL appear there in red. CL means clear. That's what I've just done. It's two, three, just sequence in drop, four. I held my foot down on the pedal, this pedal, because it said clear. Okay, we're going to record a drum beat now. Two, three, that was four. Okay. This red light here has come on. It says record. It's recording now because that red light's on. I'm recording that drum beat into this pedal. I'm watching the, the drum beat oscillator. One, two, three, four. Three, four. Can you hear that slight doubling of the drum beat? It's because I had the, both the beat buddy and the red pedal, the Boss RC3's drum playing. Because I've recorded that drum beat. What you're hearing now is on this red pedal on the floor, pedal A. And this light here is flashing red and green. Because it's telling me it's playing the first loop. Did you hear that double? Because I didn't, didn't get my timing quite right. But we won't be concerned about that. Okay. I want to record that now, so I quickly press the foot pedal. Okay, this I doubled it up, but it's fine. I have now got that in my memory bank of this pedal, but I need to save it like you would back up your computer. You save it every time you've done one layer because we can do multiple layers with this machine. The button I push, it says you are. When I push this button here, which says right, I push it once, it starts flashing with the letters UR, which says, means unright. So what I've got to do now is push it and hold it down. You've got to push it quickly. The light, the channel 34 in red will vibrate like that and when it stops you know you've recorded you've wired it in if you want to get rid of it you depress this pedal and you hold it down till you see the letter cl come up and then it will flash a bit cl and then you've erased the memory you've now got a blank a blank recording if you do cl by mistake you're going to lose your three hour recording I, but I have now pushed that right button and I'm going to push it again. It says you are, but it, let's say it means under right. I push it quickly. Now listen. It's still there. I've now got a drum beat. You heard that slight double on the bass pedal as I started it. That's where, where I didn't stop the drum beat and get the sequencing of the drum beat. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Notice that at first, if you're doing with a beat buddy like I am, you let it play through four bars of music. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. It's two. One, two, three, four. That's three. One, two, three, four. And immediately, uh, depress that button. And it will, the red light will flicker to, to tell you that it's recording. When I've done that, I push the right button. Very quickly and it will flicker and when it stops you've now written that channel if I do it again I'm gonna play guitar now I'm gonna put my rhythm guitar over it right so I first let it run okay now I'm gonna depress the foot pedal
just went like that and it stopped. You notice a few faults there. I didn't count the beats in the bar on my drum pedal. I didn't pay attention to how many bars of music are recorded. Therefore, you saw I was uncertain about how many A minor D chords I should strike. Therefore, you need to count. You'll get used to it, but because I'm talking, I'm not paying, but that you got the mechanics of what I'm doing. I'm now going to depress the foot pedal to let it start playing, and I'm going to put a little line over that. Whatever comes to my mind. Now I'm doing my third layer. I've got my drums layer one, my rhythm. Very basic. I'm now going to put my third layer in. Watch this. Now I'm going to let it start playing. This red light's flashing. Tell me it's playing. stop it. I decide I play it back now by depressing the pedal. I don't like it. I tap the foot pedal twice and I stop it. I need to erase it. What I do now, don't depress the foot pedal. Then you'll see the letters C all come up in red on your screen here and you'll lose everything you've done. The key now is to depress the right button so that you save the first three tracks. It's very important. I can't stress this enough. If I push that button down now with my foot, it's going to go C L. I'm going to lose everything I've recorded for the last three hours. I've got to first push the right button. Now I'm going to do that, just so that we can proceed. The button comes up, this one here, comes up green, it flashes. And as long as it's flashing with a number 34, because I'm on the 34th channel, it's now stopped. I have now written that into memory. Guess what? You can erase it, like slash file delete in the old Excel, the old notice one, two, three. If you know what I'm talking about. Right, I've got the drums, I've got my basic rhythm and my very basic bass. Plenty of errors with the timing and everything, but we don't care. We want to put layer four, four over that, so if you press the foot pedal. This one, sorry. We can hear all the errors there, my bass timing is out, but let's accept that now. But the bad news is, if you don't like it, you're going to start right from the beginning again. Let's assume we like, but this is just practice with the pedal. Let's assume we like it for now. Okay, so I've hard written that. So it won't go away unless I push that pedal down now and hold it down. And you're going to see the, the letters come up in your screen, CL, which means you're erasing the whole memory. If you just want to erase the last thing you did before you save it, Make sure that it's played. This is the key trick with this pedal. Before I push the right button, if I didn't like that button, if I didn't like the, the bass I put in, I would let it play. In other words, you would, you would see that button's all flashing and the music's playing. If I then depress that pedal, it will unwrite only the last overdub, but it's too late now. 
So let's put another layer in. Now it's played. I've written it. It's hard. If I want to start all over again, I push it down and I'll get a seal. But I want to add. So while it's played. push the right button and it will record that permanently I cannot undelete it at that point I don't like that you can see the importance why I had to count the beats in the bar which I didn't do that's why I wasn't quite sure when to stop and end I had to wait till I heard myself come in remember I am 40% deaf in my left ear uh, my right ear as it is okay I'm gonna play it back to myself now by depressing the foot pedal <laughs> get rid of it. I quickly tap the foot pedal twice. It stops. If I depress the foot pedal now, I can't stress this enough, it's going to go CL and it's going to clear the whole bass. You can start all over again from scratch. It must be plain. When you depress the pedal while it's playing, it will only erase the last recording. In other words, the fourth over now. Watch this. started flashing and as long as it's flashing it's unwriting that last little segment the fourth segment it's gone now I'm gonna put it in now I'll impress the foot pedal push that pedal down now I'm gonna get CL once again I'm warning you you've been recording for three hours now and if you hold it down now while there's no music you're gonna lose everything that's the key point of this video press it once I don't like it while the music's playing I switch off while the music's playing I depress the pedal I see you in unright While the music's playing, red light. Red light means I'm recording. Does it make sense? Red light means the recording is working in operation. Go down to the pedal board and I push right to hardwire it into my Boss RC3 pedal. Little green, channel 34, little green light shows it's while the green light's flashing, it's writing. It's stopped now. I have got four bars, uh, four layers of music on one channel, channel, channel 34. <laughs> I'm now going to practice some soloing over this.
I can do what I want to now. I was, I've recorded that on my phone. I was just messing around over my loop. I'm done. If I like it, I've saved it. I can switch the electricity off. It's there. It's like my old tape recorder. It's in my cassette. It's going round and round on a piece of tape, but in an electronic format. I come back tomorrow, I'm not happy. I can push, switch the power off, it'll still, and switch it on now. <laughs> up come back tomorrow and I'll try something else over the same loop but I'm just switching off the uh, distortion pedals I'm not happy with this I think it's absolute crap and it is guess what I'll push <laughs> the music was playing that's got no effect because it's hard written into the circuitry of this machine you can record three hours, up to three hours of music on this little machine for that price. I should be paid for this. Right. While the music's off, I'm on channel 34. Make sure you're on the right channel. Don't go delete channel 35 because that's smoke on the water. You spend six hours making that backing track for smoke on the water. Don't. Make sure you're on the right bank. I've got schedule after schedule on my laptops and iPads and computers. Which bank contains what? Guess what? It changes every every flipping month. <laughs> but I've got a record of what's on these memory banks. I've got 200 backing tracks that I've made over the eight years now. But they change all the time. I've, I've done thousands of songs. Probably five, six thousand. Many of my own recordings. While there is no music, depress the foot pedal and hold it down. Until you see the letters CL come up on the screen. <laughs> It's gone. Oh damn. I really wanted to keep it. Guess what? I use these up and down. I go up or down to the next or previous channel. I'm going to go from channel 34 to channel 33 and back to 34. I went down to 33 and back up to 34 showing on my display. Guess what? If I raise it, because I've already written it into the memory of this machine, if I raise it by mistake, because there was no music, while there's music, you'll see UN, but it's got nothing to underwrite because it's already hard written into the circuitry. But if there's no music, and I can go back to the previous or the next uh, bank, as they call it, memory bank, which is like an, a different record album in your collection or CD. It will still be there. But while there's no music, uh, if I do nothing else now, it will still be there tomorrow when you switch on because you did save it. I'm being really basic here because you're going to get frustrated. A guitarist told me just two weeks ago that he recorded for an hour or so and he lost everything. I said, oh, welcome to the club. So I hope I'm stressing this enough for you. But if you really don't like it, I've, I've made sure I've depressed it. I'm holding my foot on there until the CL starts flashing. There is, it is a blank recording. Guess what? I'm going to put my drums on now. Now, key thing here is let that roll happen first because you don't want that roll in your loop. It's just going to going to be awful. We're going to try and record the rhythm again now. Three, four. But now, 
I hit the wrong button on the, on the drum machine. That's not part of this lesson. But now I've got a lot of a lot of nonsense on my recording. What do I do? While the music's playing, I depress the foot pedal. It's not. It's not working because I haven't pre-recorded or done anything. I've only got one channel, so I hold it down. I click it again until I get it clear. Now it's clear. Now I'm going to try again. Get my drums going. Oops. I, I just need to fix my... Uh... Now I've got my drums going. Three, four. One, two, three, four. rapid foot depressions go down to your pedal and push right because you want to save that you've got something you can work with you've got four bars of music and i encourage you to keep them short four to eight bars initially until you know what you're doing i know this is a long video but if you pay attention you'll, you'll really get this right now if i depress <laughs> failure there. Let's see what happened. getting somewhere so what I do I depress right because I've got two tracks of music now <laughs> let's say I want to introduce a new sound over that though one two three four <laughs> D minor. I pushed the button twice. I had the red light which told me it's recording. Now if you listen back to it, it's a mistake. What do I do? Don't push it while it's quiet. While the music's playing, depress the foot pedal. Unright comes up on your screen.
got four. Let's listen to it. Satisfactory to me. Right. So I push right. 34 channel is flickering away with a green light, which means it's rook. It's writing when it's green. When it's red, it's recording. Green, it stops. What can I do? It's now in the circuitry. I'm repeating myself for your own. It's in the circuitry. I have two choices. I can switch electricity off, come back tomorrow. It's still there. Or I don't have the option of holding the pedal down. While it's quiet, you're going to get CL and it's going to be gone. What do you do? Take it from channel 34 to 35 or 33, above or below channel. Then come back to 34 and your music will still be there because it's in the circuitry. If you don't like it at all, depress it, hold it down until you get the CL flashing and, and it'll tell you and you're all clear. If you think, oh God, I made a mistake because you will. Don't panic. Take it back to 33 or 35. Come back to 34, it will still be there, it's in the circuitry. If you don't like it, you hold it down, you get a CL, you start re-recording your drums, your rhythm, your bass guitar, or your fills, and you underwrite each channel as you're going along, and um, you, sa you save it. Each layer you save, each overdub layer. I hope this helps you, it's been going on for a while, and now, I've saved that. I can come back tomorrow and jam over it. Microphone's going through a total different amp, that doesn't form part of the loop. My bass guitar, when I bring it out, will go in to the same, I'll use the same needle to swap guitars, and I can record a bass guitar. And I find this boss guitar no amp. I'm told by the experts, so long as your speaker is at least 10 inches. So I've got a 12 inch speaker on this Boss Katana amp. These um, four greenbacks here are four 12 inch uh, 300 watt speakers. Um, that's 1200 <laughs> of whatever that uh, uh, academic electronic language is but that's a lot of power you can play on a, a rugby stadium with this amplifier but I'm using this boss 100 watts um, solid state transistor uh, it's not as loud as this guy but it's very loud as well um, I'm only playing it on a level um, less than quarter two on a, a clock style but um, way less, more like 22 uh, at 100 watts RMS, and, uh, but it's a 12-inch speaker. It handles a bass guitar, a proper bass guitar, pretty well. So, and your pedals can all handle the bass guitar pretty well. That's not effective, it's the speaker, because you'll blow the cone of a speaker if you play through a 6-inch through a speaker or a 4-inch speaker. You'll blow the living daylights out of the blow, and then your amplifier can blow, especially these tube amps. So don't be stupid that way. But other than that, you can't do much damage. I have cautioned you very much um, that if you're using an effects loop, make sure that you start with zero volume here and zero volume on your amp. But when you're using the effects loop on the, on the back of the amplifier, the volume controls on the front of the amplifier do not control the volume what's coming out of this pedal. So for goodness sake, go very slowly until you know exactly what volume you're going to get out of because if you've got the wrong switch at the back of that amplifier depressed, you're going to get something something like 630 watt, watts of, of... It's loud. As I say, it literally hit me in the chest. I was on my hands and knees. It literally threw me four meters across this room. So I'm really I'm lucky to be able to hear today because it was so loud. It was like a bomb went off in this room. Um, yep. Um, Hey, I hope you guys have enjoyed this. I, 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 now I'm repeating myself a lot, but it's only a, a, a matter of trial and error. So that's it. 
you've got your uh, the, the, the small one here is your drum your uh, attenuated beat poof 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 um, which I'll just play for you so you can hear what it sounds like I'm just watching the volume there on the on the small control and I'm depressing a drum beat I've, I've pushed that that one there and I can go up and down to get different drum beats and if, and if I depress that one I'll get different tempos right now 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 you want to find some... This beat that you're hearing out of this machine is known as an R3. What you do is you push that down and you push on these and you'll see the thing comes up R3, R1, R2, 3, 4, up to 9. It's got 9 attenuated drum beats on it. You use these up and down controls. Once you've seen the R numbers there, if you don't have a drum machine of your own, I'm now going R5. So I'm playing R8 now. That was loop 33. Thank, but that's your drums. You hold that button down until you see R1, R2, R3. Whatever R you get, you use those two little buttons to move it up and down. If you want to use these attenuated drum beats that come on this machine, just hold that down until you see a, R, a small R and a letter one, two, th or numeral one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You've got different beats if you want different speeds of those. You first set your drums up and then you do all the other procedures I explained to you about um, getting your, normally you'd go drums, um, rhythm guitar, I find. Then I put my bass in and then I would layer. I've done up to 16 layers of guitars and I might pick several different guitars. You know, you find often like a Telecaster and a Stratocaster will go beautifully together or um, a Les Paul and, and a Stratocaster go beautifully together. And you, you put different layers and flavors and different sound effects on different guitars. And, and, and remember, I told you right up front, make sure your settings are at par. Because when you do the playbacks, once you've ascertained the volume of your amp with your drums machine especially, um, I tend to keep that one down because I use a Beat Buddy, an external drum machine, an attenuated drum machine, unattenuated drum machine, and then don't put that volume control here up at 10. Because when when you play back you know you're gonna it's gonna be so out of whack with the volume on your amplifier of your guitar which is going through your amplifier so please keep things at par once you've ascertained what volume if you're using your effects loop it's, it's going to give you i can't stress enough that you can really hurt yourself um, once you're confident what you're doing with the volumes then you start experimenting and, and i've told you basically and that's really all you need to know. Um, it can work off a battery or it works off a power supply. Uh, you can take this, um, this USB cable and save your memory bank onto your computer. Um, you can play this machine through your hi fi I've actually uh, recorded that helicopter in the Pink Floyd the wall. You know that helicopter landing sound? I've recorded it onto this pedal through my uh, stereo hi fi set, through these... Um, auxiliary ins USB to plug into your computer or laptop and you can transfer data onto the computer and bring data and update this pedal electronically if that's your sort of thing and that's it <coughs> excuse me I've, I think I've talked a lot it's um, bar opens in 45 minutes time I'll spend the next 45 minutes listening to this video and I hope you enjoy it as much as I've enjoyed presenting it to you uh, I'm obviously not a professional presenter but, but I do know what I'm talking about and if I've missed a point let me know because I really do know how this stuff works but most presenters will tell you that you get a bit confused when you're actually presenting. 
I, I can't mention names for obvious reasons, but when a guy gave a lesson on uh, effects loop, he had it totally the wrong way around. You could blow your head off if you listened to what he told you to do. <laughs> and I'm talking about one of the world's best guitarists of all time. He's clearly not a, a technical guy. <laughs> so I do know how this stuff works, and I'd encourage you to buy one of these. Not that I want to sell mine. In fact, if you've got one, I don't even want to buy it from you because I, I can't get enough of these things. Thanks for viewing. And that's over 1,200 videos on my channel. Most of them are uh, three minutes on average. I'm starting to make longer because I need more views to, to get my pension fund going through YouTube one day. <laughs> I hope you got the same sense of humor as me. And uh, just remember my January um, the 20th is my birthday. In 2024, that is. So uh, you want to send me birthday wishes? I'd appreciate that. <laughs> Thanks very much. Bye-bye.